Months passed without any progress on the case. Meantime, the prime suspect moved out of state. With each passing day, the more likely it seemed that Cher Elder's demise would forever remain a secret between the killer and the victim. The only thing keeping Richardson going was the faith that Cher Elder was buried somewhere in Empire Valley. But finding her in the craggy lowland would be an arduous task. This valley is about 15 miles in length. And as you get out here, when you start looking for a possible location of the grave, it's nothing but rock slides and piles of rocks. And there's so many potential areas that uh, a body could be hidden in that it just became a, a maze. Weeks of foraging around Empire Valley left detectives empty-handed and frustrated. Finding Cher Elder's body in this rough terrain required a kind of expertise that would tax the resources of almost any police department. Aware that he'd reached his department's limits, Detective Richardson was running out of options. But he wasn't quite ready to throw in the towel. The relentless detective had one final inspiration. He contacted NecroSearch an elite core of scientists that uses a wide range of disciplines to locate clandestine graves. NecroSearch exists because a group of law enforcement officers and, and scientists got together and figured there had to be a better way to find murdered or buried people and evidence. Towards that goal, NecroSearch has assembled leading scientists from all over Colorado, comprising 15 specialties including botany, geology, geophysics, forensic anthropology, and entomology. The fundamental premise of NecroSearch is that buried bodies change the ecosystem around them forever. The soil above a grave may sag under rain or snow. Specific vegetation may flourish on the decomposing body. Insects and scavengers arrive. This is a case of a, of a lifetime. Uh, this took everything that we had, everything that we could use of other sources from other agencies. That's why NecroSearch was requested to come in and assist. It was real simple. We're a large, largely populated community here. We're in the metro Denver area. Um, we don't have expertise in going out looking for graves. Uh, we don't have very many graves dug in the city. So far, the all-volunteer NecroSearch team has participated in over 100 cases in 30 states and 7 countries. The group convenes monthly to review potential cases. For most petitioners, like Detective Richardson, NecroSearch represents a final glimmer of hope. I was asked by NecroSearch to come to their meeting and present the case to see if it was something that NecroSearch could assist me in. And so the case presentation was made to NecroSearch at that time. And uh, boy, they asked me questions that I'd never thought of, such as what color was what color was the dirt on Luther's pants when he came to get his car? Because that may indicate he crawled out of a mine shaft or he may have been in a sand pit. And uh, it, was, it was pretty apparent right then that when I contacted NecroSearch, these are the people that can help me because they have the experience in trying to locate a grave. The rocky terrain hampered the endeavor, making disturbances in the soil difficult to spot. The team probed the earth for clues undetectable to the human eye. Forensic geologist Jim Reed. On the geology side, we're looking for disturbances in the layering. And everything is layered. You wouldn't think so, but you come out here, you dig down a few feet, you'll find various layers within the rock, so or within the soil. And we're looking where, to see where that's been disturbed. Ground sweeps, aerial searches, and infrared analysis ruled out many potential grave sites. But still, as the months passed, no body was found. It seemed like Thomas Luther's boast about outsmarting police was coming true. In late January of 1995, 
A tip led Detective Richardson and NecroSearch to a steep, piney slope off the highway. Rocks covered most of the area. A grave could be disguised anywhere. NecroSearch did some preliminary testing of the location, but were shut down because of weather. It was now nearly two years after Cher's disappearance. Then, a crucial break came. Byron Powers, Cher's boyfriend, landed in prison for assault. It seemed Cher had a fatal lapse of judgment in her choice of companions. In an effort to lessen the charges against him, Powers dangled a piece of information in front of the police. He said he knew that Luther had killed Cher Elder, and he knew where he'd buried her body. Powers had been there about three weeks after Cher's death to help Luther better conceal the grave. Powers directed Richardson right past the point where the necrosearch team had given up. Unlike most killers who hastily dump bodies downhill, Luther had taken his time in selecting a grave that would seem an improbable choice to police. What we ultimately learned is that Thomas Luther carried the body of Cher Elder straight up a hillside by a rock slide and went uphill, which is uncommon. The pile of rocks that Powers pointed out was less than a foot from the place that Richardson and NecroSearch had been testing shortly before the weather had forced them to quit. We were two inches from the body of Cher Elder when we quit digging the first time. We went back, excavated to remove the body of Cher Elder. As if setting up an archaeological excavation, the team established a grid and embarked upon an old-style dig Laboriously, the team scraped soil 10 centimeters at a time. Archaeologist Steve Ireland was part of the search for Cher Elder's remains. There, the uh, initial two or three inches of ground uh, was frozen. It was, what, uh, January or February, as I recall. And uh, so there, we had to use a pick in order to uh, get that top uh, couple of inches, which was frozen off. After four days and two feet of digging, the team reached bone. Excavated with fine hand tools like whisk brooms, toothbrushes, and bamboo sticks, the remains of a body finally took shape in the frozen soil. Dental records would identify the body as Cher Elder. Preliminary autopsy results showed that the young woman had been shot in the head three times, execution style. This discovery might have been enough evidence to convince a jury that Luther had killed Elder. But prosecutors would have a much better chance if they knew the time of death. If the body had been buried at least two years ago, a time when Cher was known to have been with Luther, the charge of murder would be much easier to prove in court. The team's careful excavation uncovered a clump of plant roots growing into the victim's soft flesh. NecroSearch called in botanist Vicki Trammell to extract and preserve them. Uh, it's older, so it's a lot Could bigger. she determine the time of burial from this botanical evidence? When digging is done and roots are cut, this stimulates growth of new roots into the fresh backfill dirt. So the idea was that these roots ought to be about the same general age as the grave. In order to determine the age of the new growth, the roots were sent to a lab where they were cut crosswise and stained, highlighting the characteristics of the cells. Most woody species of trees, like the pines and firs that forested the area near the victim's grave, 
form their roots in the same way, and the new roots have a particular pattern of cells that can be recognized under the microscope. Most of the differences involve the xylem, which is the water conducting tissue in the plant. And what I'm seeing is uh, the water conducting tissue kind of in a triangle. And that it's the triangle shape that tells me that that is a very young root, about a first year root. Another year's growth sees a significant change in the cells. The triangle of tissue gives way to larger water conducting cells. This tells me it's a secondary root. From their cellular structure, Trammell estimated the roots to be two years old. Her findings sealed the case against Thomas Luther, proving the grave was dug at a time after he was released from jail and known to be with the victim. In the end, a jury was convinced that Thomas Luther killed Cher Elder. He was sentenced to 48 years in prison with no chance of parole. Thanks to the tireless pursuit of Scott Richardson and the cutting edge forensics of the NecroSearch team, the odyssey had finally come to an end. I myself don't believe in what they call closure. I believe if you lose a loved one that you will feel that loss for the rest of your life. But at least if they know what happened, they po possibly can get on with their life in some way. After the case ended, NecroSearch paid Detective Richardson the ultimate honor and inducted him into their selective ranks. Without his determination, Cher Elder would still be hidden in a desolate grave. The Earth is an impartial eyewitness to murder. But forensic botany and geology are finding ways to gather its testimony. Crimes considered unsolvable a few years earlier are now being won on the basis of roots, seeds, and sand. The landscape has become grounds for conviction, but we've only begun to scratch the surface.